Okay, so I just realized that uh, I made a mistake. I cut this hole the wrong size on this face plate here. So am I upset about it? <laughs> With that said, I'm just gonna make another face plate and we'll mount this sideways and everything will work out just fine. Hey everybody, John from the Crafting Brothers here. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build a hot wire cutting table. Now you can buy these on Amazon if you want and they range from 125 to 300 and up depending on the size of table that you want. I have some tools in the garage here, so I decided to give this a go. I wanna give a shout out to Luke Toen at Boulder Creek Railroad. He's the one who built this original table that I'm modeling mine after. I'm just adding a few things uh, extra like this ripping fence here. Let me take you through the process here. This is really not that complicated. Let's get in the garage and start building a cutting table. Here's a look at the elements you'll need before starting this build. The main items being a dimmer switch, power adapter, on off switch, cutting wire, and a zinc bar. Some of these are Home Depot items and the others can be purchased through Amazon. I'll make sure to leave links for all of these items. So I've already built one of these tables for my brother Greg to use and now I'm going to build one for myself. On the top of the table you can see we've got the zinc or steel bar that's bent all the way through the table here. Uh, we've actually drilled a hole in the end of it and secured a nail which holds our spring here which provides the tensioning for the cutting wire and then it's attached with this half inch washer. We are ready to start cutting out the pieces for the foam cutting table. So this doesn't have to be a specific measurement but I'm going to make mine about two feet, 24 inches by one foot or 12 inches. The front and back pieces are gonna be just a little bit different because we have an extra half inch for the top of the table here. So it's the same width uh, or length of 12 inches. And then we're gonna go three and a half on this. This is actually three, but uh, we're gonna make this table about a half inch taller. Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut. I've got the two sides, the surface, the front and the rear pieces cut. And then I had this additional insert piece cut here. It was 11 inches by two, I think. So let's glue all the pieces together now with some carpenter's glue. So just use your finger to make sure it's all flush here before you put the nail in because you can't do this twice. So let's move to the front plate and uh, I'm going to install all of the electronics on this piece and then we'll uh, move to the next step. I've got all these measured out where I want to put them. There's no exact measurement here so just kind of place them about where you want them to go and try and get it as centered as you can. Remember with these switches here there's an inside edge and an outside edge so you actually have to cut it a little bit smaller so this will actually snap in place. I'm going to use a bandsaw to cut the holes out for the elements to go in, but it's easier if I drill out the corners before I start cutting with the bandsaw. Okay, so I just realized that uh, I made a mistake. Okay, I'm man enough to admit it. I cut this hole the wrong size on this face plate here. I intended to put the dimmer switch up and down like this, but I forgot that it will not fit in here like this. It has to be sideways. So am I upset about it? No. <laughs> Do I have to redo this? Yes. So I've got the new face plate here and I've had to cut it so that I can mount the dimmer switch sideways. If you want it to go up and down, you're just going to have to make your table a little bit taller, maybe three and a half to four inches. I'm marking the hole for the cutting wire to go through at ten and a half by six inches. Be really careful about the depth. We don't want to over drill the hole or under drill it because this has to sit flush on the table. Okay, that looks good. Once you've drilled the hole for the washer here, you should have uh, a 7 16 inch hole left here. So we need to drill that hole as well all the way through the board. Okay, washer should fit right in there and now the hole goes all the way through the board. The reason why I cut these small pieces of wood here, they are uh, half inch pieces of plywood, two half inch pieces. Uh, I'm gonna need these to mount onto the dimmer 
which will then mount it onto the front plate here. Also, what I have to do is I have to cut around this, so I just need two pieces here and here, and then I'll be able to mount it to the back of the plate here. I'm cutting a hole for the zinc rod to pass through the top of the board at six inches by two and a half. We've got our 5 16 inch zinc wire. This part's a little bit tricky because what we have to do is bend this in a little bit of an L shape uh, and then bend it up so it can go through the top of the board. Uh, this part's a little bit difficult and you can do this a couple of different ways. If you have a vise, you can go ahead and put it in there and bend it that way. Um, you wouldn't want to use anything thicker than a 5 16 inch rod because you would just wouldn't be able to bend it easily. So got this in here. This is about, I'll get a measurement for you. It's about six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first bend at six inches. And you can see that took a little bit of force, but you can get that eventually. And if you need to, you can use a hammer and pound on that uh, and that will bend it too. So we're going to go up about another five inches. Five inches from here, from the first bend up to the top here. And we're going to make a 90 degree bend so we can uh, have this pop up through the uh, table, surface of the table. 90 degrees and that's going to work. I can go ahead and start mounting this to my table. Well, here's the bar. We've got a little bit of an L bend in there, not a full L, and then about a 90 degree angle right here. So what we're going to do is put it up through this hole that we drilled towards the back of the table. And it's going to go in just like that. And now we are going to want to mount this to the underside of the table. Since the 90 degree angle on the bar is a bit rounded, I had to shave off some wood on the underside so I could mount the bar flush. We're ready to put the final bend in the bar here. So what we want to do is just kind of make a gradual bending motion. As long as this is kind of hanging straight over the hole, uh, that's all I'm gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this to the new board and we're gonna cut this off and we actually have to drill a hole into the tip of this thing. We've got the hole drilled in here where we want our bolt to go through. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just see if I can get this bolt. I've drilled the hole a little bit smaller than the bolt because I want it to fit in there nice and tight. Okay, and I'm not going to tighten that down all the way because we have to attach a wire, as you can see right here. The idea is we're going to be clamping the wire right in the middle of the hole down there. So we want to try and line all that up. I've attached a red positive wire to the bolt and added several nuts on the other side, which is going to secure the hot wire. I'm using a hot glue gun here to secure the dimmer switch to the back side of the faceplate. Okay, and then we're gonna mount it to the back of the plate here. Actually, before I do that, before I make another mistake, I'm gonna wire this up so I have enough room to get in and out of here before I put it on the plate. I've got some really heavy duty 10 gauge wire left over, uh, but you don't need to use this. You can use any size wire that you want. The wiring may appear to be a bit tricky, but it's actually quite simple. The black or negative wire attached to the zinc bar goes to the V-minus out terminal on the dimmer. The red wire attached to the bolt goes to the V-plus out terminal. Next, both the negative and positive wires located on the top of the on-off switch are connected to the negative and positive in terminals of the dimmer switch. Finally, the lower positive and negative terminals of the switch are connected to the power source. I also decided to hot glue the zinc bar to the underside of the board just for some extra strength. After all the components are glued in, I'm ready to attach the faceplate to the hot wire table. And before the final coat of paint, I'm going to spackle and sand everything down.
I'm using a square to cut the end of the zinc bar over the hole on the table. After that, I'll need to drill a small hole in the end of the zinc bar where I'll glue a nail to secure the hot wire. Some two-part epoxy is used here to glue the nail in the end of the bar. Next, I'm ready to build the ripping fence for the top of the cutting table. For this, I'm just using leftover MDF plywood scraps. Four and a half by four and a half. So the angle piece, we're gonna cut 45, 45, and this has to be 12 inches long. And if you cut it right, it should fit right in here. Okay, and then we can just put all that together. I wanna work as quick as possible so this doesn't drip all over the place. What I'm doing here is adding a bolt on the side of the ripping fence so I can secure it to the tabletop when I start cutting foam. I traced the outline of the nut and then used a small chisel to remove the wood. Okay, once you get enough of that material out, you should be able to fit that right in there. Some two-part epoxy is used here to secure the nut on the side of the fence. Finally, I painted the surface of the table with a light gray, and then I'm going to paint the outside edges black. I also need to install the nichrome cutting wire by securing a washer and spring to one end, then I'll secure the wire under the table. Thanks for watching everybody. Please subscribe to our channel and feel free to send me any questions or comments you have on this project. And we'll see you next week with another build or challenge.